Superhero Stuff You Should Know is part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. Hey, this is Ben from Superhero Stuff You Should Know, and I have an important announcement for you guys. At the end of every single episode of Superhero Stuff You Should Know, you might hear a shout out to our fans, one of whom is Matt Herring, who was one of the original Superhouse fans. He's always given us his support, and now it's time that we support him. Uh, we've just recently found out that Matt has been diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. And as a cancer survivor myself, I know personally that there is a lot of emotional and financial strain that comes into that. Uh, his wife, Kelly, has set up a GoFundMe account at GoFundMe.com slash F slash Matthew hyphen kicks hyphen cancer 039 S hyphen butt. Uh, and hopefully you can help reduce the financial strain to that as well as some of the emotional strain that comes with that. Again, that's gofundme.com slash F slash Matthew dash kicks dash cancer 039 S dash butt. Matt Herring was the first, I guess you could say, true Superhouse fan. We were Superhouse at that time. The, you know, the first fan of this podcast and what we do here and um, has always supported us, talked about us, and um, he's from a town close to where I'm from, and uh, so we share that as well, and just a huge superhero fan, and, you know, nerd like the rest of us, and now he's going through that, and uh, if you could donate just at least any amount of money to that link that Ben just said, that would be truly appreciated. Just hang in there, Matt. You'll beat this thing soon. Welcome to the latest debate between our two candidates. I can't believe it's come down to these two, but we have on one side, uh, Mr. Bain, is it? Yes, that'd be correct. And on the other side, we have the Joker, who appears to have brought his sanity translator named Bob the Goon. <laughs> you bet your sweet hors d'oeuvres I did. <laughs> what he means to say is thank you, and I'm glad to be here tonight. Okay, well, uh, let's start off with the big question everyone's talking about. COVID-19 has hit. What are you going to do about the state of healthcare, starting with Mr. Bain? Well, you see, I would have 100% less nuclear weapons in Gotham, which would lead to less radiation in the air, which would ultimately increase public health. Okay, that's interesting. What about uh, you, Mr. Joker? Well, I think I'm going to push my new Smilex brand products. <laughs> you see, if they're dead, nobody can get sick. <laughs> yeah, yes. He, what he's also saying there is he believes in the prosperity and happiness of all American citizens, especially in Gotham. And there's products involved. Now, you see, I don't really believe that that is the correct translation. Well, you don't know the Joker like I do, so why don't okay, you back it up, buddy? Let, let's keep this between the two candidates. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, fake news. Uh, fake news. That's th right. Th thank you, Mr. Joker. Thank you, Mr. Joker. Uh, Jesus has already gone off the rails. All right. Uh, next question. Then, you've gone off the rails. On voter fraud <laughs> in terms of the post office, what is your stance? Do you think it is real or not? Mr. Bain. Well, I do believe in fraud. I'll put it that way. I'm afraid that doesn't quite answer the question, but uh, the turn is uh, yours, Mr. Joker. Thank goodness it's back to me. You know, I love to talk. <laughs> oh, I tell my voters, vote once, vote twice. Sell. Vote as many hands as you have. I want the dead people to vote. I'll drag them in myself. Uh, sir, I don't believe that's legal. That was pretty much just plain English. Ah, well, you know, that's never stopped me before. <laughs> I think that what's legal and what's politics have always been a bit separate there, moderator. Yes, okay, well, uh, this is very enlightening for the American public. Uh, I guess the last question then is... I promise to have faster movie plots and to not break down the third installment of a beloved franchise. Maybe you should focus on having a voice people can understand. When I re-recorded my voice, it everyone understood me perfectly. Now, now, let's not be shaming the man who needs a respirator in order to talk. We don't need to go <sighs> to dirty dealings over here. You can also hire me out as a free agent. I do work for the Joker. Sorry, Mr. J, no big deal. But if you need a translator, I mean, I got time. I get the asthma vote. 
I like villains who can speak and don't need respirators. <laughs> you fucking ableist. All right, let's get back to the big issue here. Who is your appointed judge to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg, starting with Mr. Bain? Well, I would go for Kite Man, because I could just freight train his ass into anything that I wanted him to do. And Mr. Joker? Oh, that's a nice choice, but I think I'm going to have to go with old Harvey Dent, you know? <laughs> At least half the time he's worth it. <laughs> I concur. That guy's totally misunderstood. There you have it, folks. These I are think our you've, stopped, uh, you've stopped translating and just started agreeing with him, translator. Well, at this point, I'm just... That's what he's getting paid for. Vote me! Okay, everybody, there you have it. Those are our presidential candidates. You may have to end up voting third party for the first time in all of American history. I'm the one that knows nuclear weaponry more than you. I should be the one behind the commander-in-chief of Gotham. You know well, you've nothing. Well, you just got a funny you, mask on. You're not even know. a luchador like you were in the comics. I, uh, I get the you asthma have vote. You've and you never know done anything you know for what? the city. I've got a bomb right in anyway, so see you later. Welcome to Superhero Stuff You Should Know by Superhouse. This week, in America at least, is election week, and we couldn't think of a better way than to join forces with, once again, our guest, Zachary Jackson Brown. It's and... me, your old Uncle Joker's back again! I'm sorry, <laughs> didn't know if I was supposed to... He's yeah. stuck in character. He's stuck. <laughs> I was stuck in the Indeed Wizard lap. Yes. I mean, when I, when I wasn't here, it was weird not being here that time. Yes. Anyway, this is Ben, the man who knows too much about Batman, and joining me in person is... Indeed, it is I, Andrew, once again. We're here in the Ben Cave, the yes. Bat Bunga Bunga Lounge. Yes, and then also over in Gotham City, it looks like... Chilling out. <laughs> sleazy Gotham style, baby. Hey, this is Wolfie. Yep. He's back. <laughs> Glad you Sorry, I missed last episode. <laughs> yes, yes. I house sat, and my friend doesn't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> Is this person a hundred years old? <laughs> she's what's she's a hairdresser. She's a hairdresser and a nanny. And the only internet she uses is off her iPhone. Baby I got girl. my phone. I don't need anything else. Gotcha. Isn't that weird? Like, I actually did date a girl that did not have Wi-Fi at her place, and it angered me. <laughs> yeah. I was not That's even because I, I wanted to use the Wi-Fi. I was like. Who are you that does? Who is this person? <laughs> yeah. I got That's all Larry exactly David how about I it. felt. Yeah, I was wearing my full Wolverine costume for the Halloween episode. <laughs> <laughs> then realized. He showed over. Whoops. Then realized. <laughs> the best well, we hope you enjoy that episode, Except everybody. Except when there's no Wi-Fi. So, uh, as I said, this week in America, at least, is election week, and we couldn't think of a better way to kick it off than covering Dark Detective, the comic where the Joker tries to run for office. Uh, Dark Detective just so happens to be the sequel to last week's Halloween Deep Dive Strange Apparitions, so check that out if you hadn't heard that yet in terms of the episode. Does Batman Normally 89... you'd ask a question, who the fuck would vote for Joker? But now it's like, it seems like totally, <laughs> uh, that's fine. I, I, I totally buy it. Yes. People, he would have a fucking, um, what do you call it? Not contingency, but uh, anyway, you have would a have base. A campaign, yeah. Yeah, you have a base. Campaign base, indeed. Yeah. Uh, so, if you followed our deep dive into The Dark Knight versus the comics parts 1 through 3, you may remember that Dark Detective's writer Steve Englehart has a point of contention with the Nolan film, believing it to be a ripoff of his work on Dark Detective, which is why this week's episode is called, Is the Dark Knight a Ripoff of Dark Detective? Yes. Ooh, right, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Episode <laughs> over. <laughs> Credit Thanks roll. for listening, yes. everybody. All right. See you next time. <laughs> Zach, uh, let us know where we can find you on Instagram. Okay, no. <laughs> you want a shorter content, baby. This is it. Uh, well, no, it's a sequel <laughs> that got published. Uh, if you remember, Strange Apparitions is 1978. Dark Detective, however, is 2005. So this is 27 years after the arc known as Strange Apparitions. So we're going to cover a little bit of Dark Detective, but mostly the unmade comic book sequels that were never published that if you've read The Laughing Fish or if you've read Dark Detective or heard about the story, you probably don't know the breakdown of what could have come after. Uh, real quick before we start, though, I wanted to follow up on our Death in the Family episode in terms of our poll results. Oh, yeah. For, uh, I didn't make a bet on this one, so... Yes. So <laughs> I totally lost the Under the Red Hood one. <laughs> All right. Well, if you have seen uh, A Death in the Family, I'm not going to give too many spoilers away. Have you seen Death in the Family yet, Zach, as of this recording? The interactive one? Yes. 
No, I have not. Gotcha. Okay, so I won't give any spoilers in terms it's of the all different It's all Bandersnatch and shit, man. Yeah. With yeah. Batman. Uh, Robin lives, right? I asked, for those who have watched <laughs> Batman Death in the Family, which story branch did you like best? Zero uh, percent went to Jason Todd's Rebellion. Zero. Which is the one with the, the bandages. Hush, the Hush the yes. style one. Yes. Yeah. I us trying to give away too much to, to Zach here. Um, yeah. I'm ruin some of it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to ruin it. I'm yes. sorry, Zach. Uh, just, Red, Red Hood's yeah. Reckoning, which was our favorite, only got 17%. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 33% went into Under the Red Hood, the one that I thought was kind of bullshit. Oh, the the, 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 the coffee one at the end? Yes. Uh, that one's almost like, here's your base, and then we, you know what I mean? Like, does that one even count? I don't know, but I put it in there anyway. I was surprised it got that many votes. And I'm, then, I'm fine with that not counting, even though I liked it a lot. 50% was Robin's Revenge. Uh, what was that one again? Can you remind me? Uh, the one that we based the sketch off of with Red Robin. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yes, that was that was a pretty good sketch. Red Robin is uh, won the day in terms of that poll. For anybody who for anybody who was wondering on that, so I like the Red Robin go. suit too. I'm a fan of yeah, that. No, yeah, it's an awesome. It's suit. cool, cool suit, badass. Yes, but yeah, that's that's our follow up to Death in the Family. Back to Dark Detective. Uh, oh yeah, I happen to love the title Dark Detective. I think it's a fantastic title. I gotta ask you a question. We yes. got to 2005 before yes. there was this fucking title. I There's know, like right? Nine hundred fucking issues, <laughs> and we get dark detective <laughs> finally that's just i i find that amazing Engelhart, funny enough considers strange uh, he considers this to be called dark detective 2 okay uh his he feels the real title of strange apparitions is dark detective 1 uh, okay for the purposes of this podcast though i'm going to use the names dark detective and dark detective 2 interchangeably uh it's okay. the same thing yeah yeah that's fine um, i'm okay with it ben uh, funny enough, I don't know if you heard about this, uh, Zach or Wolfie, but apparently there's going to be a new Dark Detective title that is completely unrelated to Steve Englehart. It's, a, it's DD3. It's uh, No, it's not DD3. It's, it's completely unrelated. It's by uh, a, a writer named Mariko Tamaki, where oh, Bruce shit. apparently takes on a new persona called the Dark Detective after he uh, is trying to take down a group called the Magistrate. Uh, and That's his, cool. His outfit looks like a capeless Batman suit. Ah, uh, that's what they always try to take the cape out, which, like, you ruin the silhouette, in my opinion. I, it's I just one of those things. Like, the the next thing to go is the is the chin being exposed. It's like I know you want to modernize it, make it cool, yeah. listen to Edna Mode, that bitch. But <laughs> <laughs> we are not. Yeah, there's fans some of Edna things Mode you just, just just that just yeah. We're I'm anti Edna Mode. <laughs> so are you are you not into the Batman Beyond or the that Batgirl design that had the mouthless uh, mouth? I'm I'm okay with it with Batman Beyond because that's a, that's a totally Batman. new that's totally new that's in the future. He's also. supposed to be the new generation. We obviously modernized, but I think that there's yeah. just some things even with Face ID being on every camera in the world now. We just got a, a suspension of disbelief. Yeah. We have to let it go. Let some things go. The cape is cool. The the chin being we shown need is Bruce's cool. chin. I need it's not I Bruce need that chin. It's not Zach, Bruce feel? Wayne Batman without the chin. Really, I think is what you're saying. It's just, it's just something. Some, th- some yeah. things shouldn't be modernized. <laughs> I mean, Zach, as an artist, how do you feel about chin or no chin or cape or no cape? If it's like the classic Bruce Wayne Batman, it has to have his chin exposed to me. Yeah, and, you know, I know in the first episode of Batman Beyond where it showed like that Bruce was wearing that outfit mm. that Terry had, and it was, I don't know. I guess I accepted it then because it was kind of going into the future. But if I'm drawing him, I like having that humanity exposed there and yeah. you know it's just even trying to capture the likeness of the different actors that have played batman it just you know kind of like andrew said it just goes along with part of that silhouette it's been it's mm-hmm. worked for 80 years so of course yeah they broke don't fix it yeah I, I agree with that it's just I, carry over from from old times really i, I do want to see some sort of version i know that we're like up to our asses in terms of different origin stories for batman but i would have loved to have seen some version where bruce considers the full covering and then for whatever reason he realizes he needs to show that humanity <laughs> maybe for the innocent more so it than would, for the criminals it could work, so yeah. he can make out bad guys before they yeah make out with the bad he guys does, conscious he does have conversations with uh clark and some uh iterations right some runs where he's like you should wear a mask and then clark's like i need people to trust me or right. something like that so like, <laughs> seriously <laughs> though you he untrustworthy Cat- fuck he yeah. meets catwoman bruce he's wayne like, oh, i need a mouth opening in order to kiss her i don't Dude. think bruce really needs a lot of trust <laughs> with anybody that when he's with as batman right but i mean 
But of course, with the Bat Family, yes. But yeah. I think Superman kind of wants it with everybody he interacts right, with. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's different things. It's different. That's a it's different, different dynamic games. entirely. Uh, I know that uh, Zach has read Dark Detective that we're talking about here. Uh, how do you feel about how it stacks up or doesn't stack up with Strange Apparitions? I like it better. Than really? Strange really? Interesting. Um, Interesting. I actually reread it again last night just so I could be, you know, uh, on the up and up with it. I guess I like it because it has my three favorite Batman villains in it. Ah, uh, yes. Like Joker, Two Face, and Scarecrow. Um, oh no shit! But after rereading it last night, I am not completely happy with like the characterization of Two Face and Scarecrow in some parts of it. But mm. overall, I like it better because, to me, with it focusing on those characters solely, it feels like a more contained Batman story. Right. Um, yeah. As there's not as other than this one thing that is super bizarre and that I'm sure we'll talk about, the rest of it feels like just a classic kind of Batman story. Nothing too science fiction or supernatural, except for that one. Exception. Yeah, I think I know which one you're talking about. Best too. Scarecrow ever, go. <laughs> Best Scarecrow run ever. Let's hear it. Mm. Oh, is that I'm a asking? question? Yeah. Fear for Sale is my favorite. And Fear they, for Sale? Okay. Oh, yeah. from the 80s? Yeah, and then they yeah. repurposed that into uh, an episode from the New Adventures, where it was like, uh, I think it was fear? No, no, nothing no, to fear. Nothing to fear. Yeah, maybe. I think, th- or never fear. I'm never fear. Never fear. Yeah, the never first fear. episode was Scarecrow. That one's really I'd say, good. Yeah. Okay. I say that's one of the best up. ones. That's I, cool. I do like his role in No Man's Land simply because he has no fear gas. In oh that. yeah, it's he's, he's not overly relying on that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which which I always like because I I'm. I'm tired of the pattern of Scarecrow douses you in the fear gas and then Batman is like, oh, and then relives the deaths of his parents yeah. again and yeah. then overcomes it and then he fights, beats the shit out of Scarecrow instead right. of the Arkham. I'm like, you can do so much more with this character. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I, lo- I love Scarecrow too. Those would though. be my votes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's why I asked. All right. So. Getting back to their daily yes. scheduled program. So uh, in terms of the Dark de- Detective and the Dark Knight connections, there's going to be a bit of a crossover with our Dark Knight uh, comics versus Nolan uh, thing, but Dark Detective does start with Bruce at a party where there's a fundraising campaign for a candidate running for governor named Evan Gregory. And as he's there, Evan introduces his fiance. Uh, my name is Evan Gregory. It doesn't sound like that. And I'm here for to see Bruce Wayne and his cotillion he's holding today. Evan also is engaged <laughs> to Silver Saint Cloud. Silver Saint Cloud is my lawfully betrothed. Uh, she has not seen Bruce since the night. Her name of shall be Silver Saint Gregory. Saint. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They they do not cover what her we changed shall, names would we be. We shall be Mister and Mrs. Gregory. <laughs> and he got just a guy, a guy named Evan Gregory has a certain kind of uh, vibe to it already. <laughs> well, like, here's the funny thing. He looks like Aaron Eckhart. Oh really? I'm still doing this voice. So there's no way I'm stopping. Here, let me let me sh- <laughs> let me pull it up. And, Rachel. And, Harry Joel, right, Joel. That was almost uh, like that's a jump my favorite scare. Line. That was a jump scare, basically in the in the in the say it in the theater. Yeah, yes. when I saw it. Yeah. As you can imagine, the love triangle seems a little familiar because Engelhart claims that this inspired the Bruce Rachel Harvey love triangle in The Dark Knight. Uh, Silver Saint Cloud and Rachel Ooh. both being love interests or former love interests for Bruce, who end up with an upstanding politician boyfriend uh, turned fiance. You could even say the ending of Batman Begins with Rachel is a little similar to the end of Sign of Joker, since both Rachel and Silver leave Bruce because of his dual identity as as Batman, in a way. Uh, and then, as, I, as I've showed and covered, especially in the Dark Knight uh, comics versus Nolan, Evan Gregory strangely looks like Aaron Eckhart. <laughs> that is true. Uh, over here, because uh, he's got the blonde hair and the square jaw and stuff, whereas Harvey usually had the brown hair. Were they sort of pre-casting like they were uh, doing in, in Avengers I'm... for a long time, where they, years before Sam Jackson was Nick Fury, they yeah. made him look exactly like Sam Jackson? Like, I... I feel oh, like in the, the comics... Ultimates? Yeah. yeah. Ultimates, yeah. yeah. They kind of pre-cast him in the comics, I think. That Feels way, like years it. later, they're like, well, it is in the comics. Yeah, we've been planning this for fucking years. Steve you know that comic... That co- sorry, tangent. You know that yeah. comic Wanted? The original character was modeled after Eminem yeah. originally by oh, Mark shit. Miller and uh, I forgot the artist. But then, you know, they cast James McElvoy. Who looks exactly uh, like Eminem. They look he so does, like doesn't he? <laughs> <It's> like, <Yes. laughs> they look anyway. <laughs> All white people look the same, yeah, so exactly. who gives a shit? 
I think Wolverine that should be Eminem. Your line. <laughs> so. I get you and Zach mixed up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's I because I was looking in a mirror this whole time. <laughs> it's because we talk normal and you don't, man. <laughs> we talk normal like. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think uh, he's based deliberately based off of Aaron Eckhart because Engelhart hasn't said so. Marshall Rogers, unfortunately, is no longer with us to, to say whether or not he is. Okay. Uh, but in this plot point, in both the Dark Knight and Dark Detective, Joker crashes this com- campaign party in order mm-hmm. to uh, have fulfill his agenda. Now, in the comic, uh, he's not there to kill Harvey Dent like in the Dark Knight. He's actually there to announce his candidacy. So okay. he announces that he's just he, wild, man. Yes, I've gone. You should say this probably, Zach, but like I've gone through the red tape and I'm already on the ticket. And I don't know, just like he's all. By the time you announce your candidacy, I feel like you've already done a bunch of paperwork. And well, just the, the idea of Joker doing all this paperwork is funny to me. We'll have Zach actually announce the candidacy for the Joker from the comic. Oh shit! You guys uh, must have this ready or some shit. And in terms of why why people should vote for the Joker. Citizens, my platform is simple. Vote for me, or I'll kill you. (laughs) Now you may say, but Joker, we know you're a homicidal maniac, and it's the maniac that concerns us. Can we rely on you? And I say to you, my friends, that if the presidency doesn't have to be on speaking terms, with reality, still less does the governor see. I promise a joker fish in every pot, whether you like it or not. But who cares? I'm staying on message. Me or death. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? I like that it's not a politician. That's awesome. He's got my vote. <laughs> What's so that you wouldn't vote for the joker. <laughs> That's what we're doing, Dark Detective. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? That it's was from? in the comic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's well written. Stephen Ward's a genius. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously that was not uh, in the Dark Knight, but I did think it was it was a must to hear that on election week. Yeah, uh, for yeah. This episode. Sure. Batman does interrupt the scene, fights Joker, only for Joker to escape. Seems like kind of a familiar setup, you know, campaign party. Joker shows up. Batman helps stop it, uh, or whatever. Uh, there is another similar beat where Silver visits Bruce at Wayne Manor to sort of resolve their history, uh, and they sort of end up kind of uh, getting together during that time. So in Silver Gregory, oh! yes, Silver Saint Gregory, Silver Saint Gregory, Silver Saint Gregory, Silver Saint Gregory. So, uh, but no, in the Dark Knight, <laughs> Rachel goes to Bruce for shelter, ends up kissing him, and then sort of has to decide between the two men and and leaves with the note. Uh, She's in, playing two dudes. Mm, you mean in the Dark Knight? I mean, in, in this, so well, Saint Cloud is. I'll, I'll tell you what happens. Okay, is that uh, when she's there, Batman's like, well, or, I mean, Bruce is like, you never got to meet Batman. You always knew I was Batman. You never got to meet him. So he leads her into the Batcave. But unfortunately for him, Scarecrow had planted a fear toxin, uh, sort of vial on the suit, and so it goes off, and both Bruce and Silver encounter their deepest fears, which uh. gets interesting into the psycho- psychology of both characters. Is so, Bruce's commitment? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Silver's commitment uh, really? to oh. Bruce. Yes, twist. Uh, Silver's commitment to a man who puts himself in danger every night and her fears of that. Uh, whereas Bruce is sort of confronted by the fact that, and here's what's very interesting, is that the promise he made, the vow he made as a child, was a child's vow and did not account for an adult man's needs, which would be companionship, romance, sex. Ding dong obviously. played with. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, little boy Bruce wasn't thinking about his ding dong back then. <laughs> so he wasn't, and so Bruce realizes this, and that he needs Silver, but and Silver he realizes is. that she needs him, and she the main reason why she ran away was because of fear. So it does end with Bruce and Silver playing with his ding dong, and so that is the, <laughs> <laughs> the end of that issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that part. Tastefully drawn by Marshall Rogers, It gets, Rogers, it of gets longer flaccid even when he's Batman. Even his dick changes. <laughs> Is his foreskin pointy? So Scarecrow oh! tried to make Batman Don't, fall apart, but he ends up being Batman's a... wingman in this uh, in this issue. Who's his wingman? Scarecrow. Scarecrow's oh, trying Scare- to make Scarecrow. Batman fall oh. apart with the fear toxin, oh, but yeah. all it does is he leads Bruce to hook up with Silver Saint Cloud. So they have they have this uh, experience together, and it's kind of a deep experience, and right. it increases their bond. Realizes you know? why they like, on a serious tip. All the all the yeah all the stuff yeah. that uh, was in conflict is no longer in conflict. So okay. because of this, Silver decides that she's going to leave Evan 
and be with Bruce. Awfully okay. quick, Wait, honestly. One more serious question. <laughs> does, <laughs> does the little bat also wear a cape? <laughs> <laughs> the Diet Coke can in the... Oh, yeah, know. in the 89. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking must. Oh, and... <laughs> also, the tip <laughs> is sticking out of the bottom of the cowl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. That's why Think we need that it. opening. God, that's perfect. perfect. Like, I need that, that opening. <laughs> I wish I was more of an exhibitionist. I'd put together a art series of it. Okay, please don't. <laughs> So the next That's the next thing for AdamandEve.com to sell dick capes. <laughs> <laughs> dick costumes all around. They What's already your make going to be for Halloween. They already make cock rings. Like you just put a cape on a cock ring. It's like the same fucking shit. <laughs> Adam and Eve. I'm a mummy, but my dick is Frankenstein. Yes. <laughs> I, I, Adam and Eve, fucking get get to us. We Please, will. Yes. I will fucking sling some dildos for you. I don't give a fuck. Superhousepodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> you think we're kidding. You think we're, we're kidding. We're not. So, anyway, <laughs> uh, just real quick in terms of what happens with the other villains, because Zach mentioned like the big three villains are Scarecrow, Two Face, and Joker. Scarecrow has a kind of a big role in terms of what he does to Bruce that makes Bruce realize things. One of these other things is apparently Bruce has repressed memories of what happened after the death of his parents. Uh, like directly after, like a week, weeks after, right? The weeks following. Apparently, okay. a man tried to come over and kill him to prevent him from ratting out his friend Joe Chill. Is that normally oh, canon? This kind of thing? Uh, normally not. It was there was some version of that in Gotham. Okay. Uh, but it looks like Engelhardt had that idea first. This little added thing. Yeah. yeah. And so this okay. guy's hunting after him with a knife, and Scarecrow's making Bruce relive this. So sometimes the guy looks like a regular dude. Sometimes he looks like Scarecrow. Okay. Uh, and Bruce, young Bruce, could just let himself die but then he realizes that he wants to live and enacts his vengeance upon the criminal underworld so he uh so he defends himself and that's when he decides to make that vow that turns him into batman so i thought that was an interesting audition that's cool to the canon yeah uh and then of course batman fights scarecrow and scarecrow again really wanted to break batman but all he did was end up hooking helping him hook up with silver saint cloud <laughs> and remember who he really is so Scarecrow did not do very well in the Steve Englehart version. You got a Scarecrow voice, Zach or Wolfie? Yeah. It's hard, right? Because uh, Killian depends Murphy. Depends on what voice. I was trying to think. I like the Jeffrey Combs version so well, but yeah, I'll, the Jeffrey Combs version. Not my diagnosis. Animated series. <laughs> That's his most like. Uh, he sounds very Shakespearean in that original cartoon series. It's like yeah. A master of fear. Uh, just like, oh, yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. I yeah. like the John Noble, Christopher Lee sounding Scarecrow in uh, Oh yeah, Arkham Knight. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. yeah, Christopher Lee slash uh, Vincent Price. Yeah. Vincent, it's Vincent Price. Yeah, Christ- yeah. Uh, it's Corey Burton channeling uh, 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 Christopher uh, uh, Lee uh, uh, when he was uh, doing uh, Hugo uh, Strange uh, in Arkham uh, City. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Those so classic good. guys. So good. Vincent Price was kind of wasted as Egghead, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, you could have had him as any other villain. Wow, they're not man. they're not gonna have that in the in the Batman sixty six. I guess too scary. Although Matt, maybe they could have had some sort of like cheesy Halloween kind of thing though. Matt they Reeves, the Batman, of it. the and Batman they, uh, two Egghead. Oh, there's they a Batman sixty six issue, issue of. Um, yeah, Scarecrow? they did an issue of uh, mm-hmm. the sixty six series, and they had like their version of Scarecrow, and it was pretty cool. I could definitely okay. see it working because they had a. Um, they had a character called Shame in the series yeah. that had a fear powder or like a fear. He uh, basically had like like the same thing. ability, but it was a. Uh, mm-hmm. He was like a cowboy. He was a uh, the guy that played Uncle Ben in the first Spider-Man movie. Cliff Robertson, Cliff, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He played the character. With great power, Peter comes great responsibility. I know because I tried to kill Batman. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard to kill. Very hard to kill. Don't mess with the Batman, Peter. Uh, oh. Shot my web. Uh, real quick, because Zach mentioned it, and I feel like I have to talk about this. So Two-Face's main plot is he's trying to do crime so that he can afford to pay off the Z-list villain Dr. Double X. <laughs> Dr. Double X. He's now working in the uh, Adam and Eve warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> they just hired him because of his name. Dr. Triple X. Now. Yeah, exactly. yeah, Triple X. <laughs> triple X. Uh, he pays off Dr. Double X so that he can create... This is getting into very steamy territory. So he can create a Harvey Dent clone for Two Face to uh, to play with, uh, but the faces are reversed. But no, no, the faces <laughs> just regular Harvey. Now he's two ass. He's. <laughs> <laughs> what if Harvey just walks into the fucking Lazarus pit and then his goddamn face is healed? Again, the Lazarus pit would solve so many of these villains' yeah, problems. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nora Freeze just dunk her in the Lazarus pit. Yes. Harvey Dent dunk him in the Lazarus pit. Tr- they kind of run themselves to a goddamn corner with the yeah. Lazarus. Ra's al Ghul becomes richer than Jeff Bezos. Yeah, he's yeah. charging him. <laughs> Maybe. Do you have a mortal injury to a loved one? Please DC, come to the DC re rebirth. No more Lazarus Pith. It's all, everything else is exactly the same. <laughs> they all own businesses now. They're all in politics. Yeah. All. But apparently, Dr. Double X double crosses Two Face and not only creates a Harvey Dent clone, but also creates a Two Face clone of his bad side. Just the bad side. Just only. the bad side. So there's one who, guy who looks like Harvey Dent who is like one a devoted. Face. He's devoted to, to Two Face. And the other one is. <laughs> Is basically both sides are bad type of thing. He's okay. completely ugly like, like and he hates split him face. basically. Yes. Yeah. So that's cool. I want to see that. The well, bad, it is kind of weird face. as fuck though. In this, not gonna lie. At least Zach and I both think so on this. It's not great. This is a weak link in this story. Yeah, the clone thing just really bothers me. I, everything <laughs> else, everything else seems so realistic, and then all of a sudden it's like sci-fi channel, and I can mm-hmm. accept that in another story. But in this one, it feels very out of place, and it's just like, yeah. that's Two-Face's whole motivation. Carmine Infantino is like, you gotta feel some pages. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this come from, from Carmine Infantino? Just because of his name? Uh, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> or look know. him up, and he's like the most popular stand-up guy in DC Comics. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's his name, he sounds like he's in the mob. Come on, he's, he's part of the Falcone gang or whatever. Like geez. Carmine. Come on, Infantino. What a name, man. All right. By the way, my dad was just like, my dad back in the day was like, Giovanni Ribisi. Great name. Fucking love that name. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the name alone. Just Italian names are cool. Let's see. Uh, one little bit that I like that's realistic for Two Face is that uh, when he visits Joker at one point, A, he's pissed that Joker's trying to make a mockery out of politics because he was in politics. Oh so yeah. So he takes yeah. issue, personal issue with Joker I like trying that. to for that. I like that. So that's cool. The other thing is that when he visits Joker, he's putting eye drops into his bad eye because it exposed the whole time, so it dries up. Yeah, makes so, sense. So I'm like, that's pretty fucking cool, actually. That's a cool addition to all this. Uh, if he just wasn't refusing skin grafts. <laughs> I say it. Yeah. <laughs> say it. <laughs> say it. <laughs> Harvey, you just take the skin grafts or this this thing called the Lazarus Pit. Yeah. <laughs> it could really help your problems out, man. Oh, just saying. Shit. Yeah, that's it's. Well, I guess you can he find would a refuse Jones it. He doesn't want to go. I guess I yeah. don't know. Whatever. Um. So the big stuff that this guy makes it, it carries him too. Dunks his ass in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want my friend back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so other stuff that connects to the Dark Knight, uh, the big stuff is this love triangle with Silver, Evan, and Bruce Wayne. And Silver breaks off the engagement with Evan right before she gets kidnapped by the Joker, who thinks that kidnapping her will lead Evan to drop out of the race. Copy that. Because the Joker really wants to be governor. Uh, <laughs> so both Batman and, and Evan Gregory go to find her. And this is why the timing is cool, because we just had Halloween as of the, the release of this episode. Joker is hiding out in a haunted house. As you do. As you do. Oh, he's, yeah. He must, is like, he must do that, right? He's. Pr- I would imagine the Joker is basically homeless. <laughs> yes. Well, what, you know Wasn't I mean? his original hideout a crypt? Yeah, yeah. So if oh, you guys yeah, remember the true, yeah. crossover of Cryptid Campfire, yeah. the, is Joker Supernatural deep dive? We talked about how at one point he was under the tombstone. Another time he d- was in a haunted house. So yeah. Hart's going back to the 40s, Golden Age style type stuff here. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there's this That great, is cool. There's a great That's moment. That's his aesthetic. Yeah. That's his fucking vibe, bro. You love Engelhart. <laughs> I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> there is this great moment where Joker, he has Silver hostage, and he's like, relax, I'm not going to kill you because I need you for Evan to show up. Uh, but he also describes sort of his the thrill that he gets out of killing. And Engelhart, this just shows that Engelhart is reclaiming the throne in terms of like I'm the guy who reinvented the Joker as a homicidal maniac right. this is an insight into the Joker's mind in terms of the thrill that he gets out of out of killing this so. is like Inglehart probably read uh, Son of Sam Dahmer like serial killer kind of manifesto shit maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe Ted maybe. Bundy all that stuff I feel like once those guys became famous and then you had Urban Legend Batman. It was like Batman changed forever because it's just it just fits so well. I know you probably haven't seen it yet, but Mine Hunter, God, you, you oh, guys yeah. have seen that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like especially the first season. It's like watching Batman villains. 
don't you think? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. They're like yeah. they're like real life Batman. But I know so, they're like an interpretation of real people, but still, yeah, it's weird. It's interesting. Well, I think you'd get a kick out of it, Ben. I think it's on my list along yeah. with a whole bunch of other stuff that yeah. I'll get to at some point in the next century. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, let's hear a little bit of the insight into Joker's thrill of killing. You know what it's like to walk into a room and have men catch their breaths. Well, I get that from everyone. Darkness, solitude, stealth. Makes your heart speed up, makes you sweat. It's like sex, and I'm its master. It's better than sex, because I'm always in the mood. I love murder. I love the looks in their eyes, looking only at me. In those moments, I am what I was meant to be. The cosmic joke, the one no one understands. <laughs> <laughs> no notes. <laughs> no, no notes. Bravo. <laughs> he said sex. <laughs> Joker's talking all sexual-like. There's a lot of sex in here. We got, we got Bruce and Silver hooking up. We got heaven. We got Two Face wanting a clone of himself. When to does play Bob with. get a piece? We got. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bob likes the squishy pots too. I just love your party. jacket, Bob. <laughs> just absolutely oh. love it. Well, hello, dear. <laughs> All right, you guys Bob's can exchange definitely numbers. Definitely a sub. I think he just likes to get. <laughs> Bob is a power bottom like yeah. a motherfucker, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I'm a number one. <laughs> Lord, Take I it know to the it. Base. Take it all the way to the base. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so. Oh, uh, you've seen, um, <laughs> what's that fucking movie? <laughs> um, the cowboy one. <laughs> Brokeback Mountain. Brokeback Mountain, yeah. Put the <laughs> spit on the fucking uh, finger and go. That's a good movie. <laughs> Just think about that, Ben. That's what got uh, Bob the Goon. That's what uh, that's what convinced Nolan to cast Heath Ledger as the Joker. Really? Sure. Yeah. I mean, to, to be fair, <laughs> it, it makes was, me more. I'm, I'm serious, actually. Yeah. He was like, this guy can play anybody. That is true. Yeah. Heath yeah. Ledger was on fucking fire at that time. Yeah. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Uh, all right. So real quick, I in terms of wrapping you. up Dark Detective's discussion, in terms of how it relates to the Dark Knight, uh, Batman naturally goes to the haunted house to rescue Silver, but Evan tries to go as well. And while Batman, of course, rescues Silver, Evan is not so lucky. He falls into a trap where his arm and his leg are sliced off. I'm usually more lucky than this. And I just had to have this happen Ouch. to me. <laughs> so <laughs> Batman, Batman tells Silver that Evan's going to need her in order to be governor, especially good governor. Evan says this. You know, the, the, I'm going to need you, Silver. <laughs> and he wants Silver to stay with Evan. Silver, of course, gets pissed that he's trying to loan her out to another man and brings up that his, his logical mind is the reason why he they can't be together. It's because he doesn't know anything about love. And so okay. Batman decides to just rescue Silver and Evan out of the house, and then he leaves, and that is the end of the comic, but apparently not the end of the saga, as uh, Engelhart and other stuff. End of this mind. whole thing? Yeah. Or just the it, issue? Oh, really? End of this whole thing, yeah. Out oh, of it Dark seems Detective. anticlimactic. Uh, I mean, he does defeat Joker and Two Face and Scarecrow still, oh, but he oh, does yeah. lose well, the that girl. Stuff. It's the epilogue. Again. <laughs> uh, again, this is where Engelhart though still maintains that the Dark Knight kind of ripped him off again because he feels that you know this is a this part where again Batman's girlfriend's lover tries to you know help in the fight of Joker and ends up getting maimed in the process, which sort of leads him down a dark path, as we're going to find out in the in the unmade Do sequels. It. Hmm. So, <laughs> as opposed to being a hero, there's already one there. Yes. Uh, because Engelhart maintains, you know, Harvey was hit in the courtroom with acid in the comics. That's not, you know, they didn't do Harvey in the movie the way that they did in the comics. They did it the way that he did it with Evan Gregory in his mind. Ah. Or so, so uh, what do you guys think so far in terms of potential similarities for uh, The Dark Detective versus The Dark Knight? Do you feel like it is coincidence? Or reinstate not. Steve Englehart as the head of DC Comics <laughs> right now. <laughs> He's writing movies and not getting paid for them is what's happening. You're total pro, Steve. Okay. okay. All right. What about you, Zach? Um, definitely more similarities than I thought there were when we were discussing strange apparitions. Mm -hmm. But 
I don't know. It's still a completely different movie. It's not like yeah. there's never been a love triangle before between like characters in the in the comics. So mm-hmm. if that's that's like the one thing I guess he's drawing from the most, and I guess he really noticed that Evan Evan Gregory looks like Aaron Eckhart, and he's like, "That's my Two Face." Yeah, or that yeah. that Two Face <laughs> is my character. But no. Yeah. yeah. I, don't I agree. I think that they could. Nolan could have come out with Dark Detective the movie followed it exactly and they still wouldn't know Engelhart a fucking penny because <laughs> Warner Brothers owns this whole fucking thing anyway. This yeah. is not a Bill Finger situation where it's he's not Bill Finger, you know what I mean? Bill Finger created the character almost wholesale yeah. he's just, pretty much. Yeah. So I just I don't know. This whole thing even if they copied a few elements, that's gonna happen that's going to happen. They do this with mm-hmm. long Halloween and uh, Dark Knight Returns all the time. And they choose this one. It happens to be Englehart. Yeah. Even if it was a little bit, some elements, it. I just don't think it matters that much. Right. Does Englehart have a case? Maybe on a couple elements, but it's not a big deal, I think. Well, he What do may- you think, Ben? I want to hear what you think. I think that it's easy to come up with a love triangle between Rachel, who uh, is already part of the DA's office in established continuity with Batman Begins that was not created for The Dark Knight. Uh, love triangle. Bo- Does the Rico her- case show up in this book? The what? Rico? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's easy to come up with a love triangle with a love interest who's already part of the DA's office. Okay. With the DA, you're trying to set up to be Harvey Dent and everything. Okay. And set up the love triangle. So that's coincidence number one, and coincidence number two is the fact that he happens to look like Aaron Eckhart. Like Aaron Eckhart is a real life man, as opposed to this drawing. It's I just not like don't... they're like we should definitely make sure that he looks like. Evan Gregory in this obscure comic that I, I really don't I don't think I don't think on that case with with um, Two Face in this uh, even if they read this I I think that they chose him for thank you for not smoking thank you for smoking thank you for smoking right uh, Nolan is on so, is too. on the books saying that he loved his performance in that. He just happens to look like this. They didn't. They weren't. They weren't trying to match this uh, Harvey. They were trying to just, from, yeah, from yeah, what I yeah. think, they're trying to cast <laughs> whoever the fuck they think is best for that role. Right. And it's just a fucking coincidence because this, there's a type for this character. Right. You if know? you look on page sixty-five, he's accidentally referred to as Aaron. <laughs> 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 Go on. Yes, look, yes. look through look just, through your copies, everybody. Just, just kidding. Saying. I don't mean to sully your knowledge, Ben. However, in uh, this is not the end of the Dark Detective saga. So, Engelhart considers Strange Apparitions to be Dark Detective One. This to be Dark Detective Two. Uh, he wrote a script, entire script for Dark Detective Three, and an outline for Dark Detective Four. They were never made by DC, but I have read them, and we're going to catch the rest of this story after the break. <laughs> I've come here this day. I, Evan Gregory, the one that is lawfully betrothed to that of Miss Silver St. Cloud herself, and I have come here to challenge you to a duel because you seem to have shown some interest in her as well. I don't know about interest. We kind of hooked up the other night, but sure, we'll call it interest. One need not use such profanity, Bruce. Mr. Wayne, I now challenge you, Bruce Wayne, to a duel. Okay, first off, I barely felt that. Second of all, are you sure you want to do this? Third of all, aren't you from, like, Jersey? Why are you talking as if you're my butler? I spent some time in the countryside of England in which I learned the foil and the saber, and my challenge to you is sabers at dawn. All right. Okay. I've already faced down Ra's al Ghul. Some random politician who thinks he's British shouldn't be a problem. And now we shall draw our sabers. All right, let's get this over with. Have at thee! Ha 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 I seem to have fallen at your sword. I barely did anything but turn my sword. You kind of just fell into it, but okay. It's a good thing I have with me my Lazarus Pit energy drink. Wait a minute, how do you have one of those? I seem to be back 
I've went on many journeys. All right, this is going to be a little dif- more difficult than I thought. How about thee again? <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm against killing. I'm not trying to do it. You just kind of keep falling into my blade. It's a good thing I have this. <laughs> Enough of these drinks. I'll just have Alfred patch you up. It's just a flesh wound anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, Silver. All right, everybody, if you like that little preview to the sketch right there, we have that plus news, plus we're bringing back some opinion pieces and uh, review type stuff and all kinds of stuff in our $5 tier on Patreon. So just go to patreon.com slash superhero stuff pod. And if you become part of the $5 tier, you can see these new bonus episodes basically consider it super house dlc oh. this is dead shot show up sit down and listen to my boys on superhero stuff you should know yeah, that's right i'm talking about you welcome back and we are going to continue our discussion on is the dark knight a ripoff of Dark Detective. Not just dark, this Dark Detective, but the sequels to Dark Detective that were never made. <laughs> and Wolfie has brought in his action figures. What is that? Is Only that 89 Joker? It yeah, is. Baby. Wolfie has set up nice. a little, for the listener that's not seeing the video, he set up the figures right on his mic. Well, Joker's standing up there on his own. It's like magic. <laughs> he's gonna pee on Batman. <laughs> that's what he's always wanted. That's why I keep. That's that's why I keep my my chin open. <laughs> Ready for the yellow death. It's been a lot more sexual stuff in this one than I was expecting. Than the but, usual. Yes, well, it's been Evan, a long pandemic. Evan Gregory likes to keep things a little bit rough, and you know, I I talk. <laughs> Evan Gregory, I talk like very smoothly, but I'm a. <laughs> I'm a minx in the, under those sheets. Well, Engelhart did want to do. Uh, Dangelhart was the one who introduced the sex life. To He's Batman. adding the sex. This is, we're on. We're on brand, we're, Ben. We're Don't even worry life. about it. Yes. Okay. Well, a Dark Detective three was written because remember he saw this Dark Detective as Dark Detective two. Uh, now Engelhart for a while did not. Really he didn't write much. three, huh? He didn't write three. He did write three. He, he wrote, did write three. He wrote okay. the rest. He basically wrote out what he wanted to do next. Okay, but unfortunately, what happened was he wrote out all the scripts. Marshall Rogers did the art, and then after doing most of the pencils for the first issue, Marshall Rogers passed away. Oh, uh, okay, so they couldn't go forward with this. They wanted to. Engelhart still wanted to do it, potentially with uh, Walt Simonson, who did the art for the previous. Maybe one. personal, but what he passed away of from? I'm not sure. Okay, it was probably left private. Engelhart has some ideas, uh, as I'll get into. Oh, uh, they they that. didn't meet probably. Were they? they well, they, they didn't meet they when the they were DC office. They weren't meeting when they were doing strange apparitions, but they had to have met afterwards. Because oh, okay. remember the, the first time he wrote it all, went to Europe, and then after he came back from Europe or at Europe, he got the issues, and he was like, "Oh, thank God, I love this art." And, and he wasn't probably, abducted by aliens on, in Tibet, like uh, not Gr- like no, Grant Morrison. Not like Grant Morrison. Okay, all right. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Tibet's also not Europe. Yes, I know right. geography. <laughs> Uh, Englehart claims that the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises crib from Dark Detective 3, the unwritten Dark Detective 3. So Nolan would. <laughs> Nolan must have had access to this third part that we didn't it, have Wouldn't it be to. Goyer, though, honestly? Goyer's reading the comics. That, and then Nolan's reading some yeah. that I, Goyer's I don't passing think Goyer over to read. <laughs> <laughs> I got a personal vendetta. Anyway. Yes. I somehow write, but I can't read. <laughs> It, it, if you can call that writing, I mean, yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh hey, hey, he, did, he did write the first draft of Batman Begins. Well, we know where your fucking allegiances lie. <laughs> yeah, probably with crayons. Anyway, can we can move on. Steve Englehart, everybody. <laughs> let's, let's, so, okay. Uh, so let's dive into Jeez. what happens. So a continuation to what happens at the end here, because Andrew was kind of like, that's kind of anticlimactic. The twas, haunted, twas. Joker's ha- haunted house is burning down. Silver's with, Silver's with Evan Gregory. Uh, Joker apparently is burned up from his encounter with the haunted house, and he decides to go to Zealous villain Doctor Double X. <laughs> as long as Doctor Double X doesn't make a clone, I love this, this guy. Time. Can you describe for the listener what he looks like? Uh, Double he X, just... huh? <laughs> he looks like Vincent Price to me. Uh, okay, he's a chubby like little Vincent mustache. And stuff. Yeah, chubby Vincent he's, Price. Yeah, he's no literally costume. anthropomorphic X's. <laughs> together <laughs> that's a Dr. Grant Morrison Triple shit X. Uh, 
he reveals probably a universe where some people are letters. Then. Yes. That's he reveals not he crazy. has uh, Joker has healing abilities apparently that came from his dip into Ace Chemicals, according to Engelhart. This oh, is interesting. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, um, I do like that. And he's going to use this place to hide out as his healing capabilities recover from his burns. Actually, that would make sense, especially being able to take punches from Batman so well. Mm -hmm. Maybe he couldn't. Maybe he's learned to fight from being kicked around so much. Yeah. Maybe a little bit Joaquin Phoenix style. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just I'm just postulating now. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, in the Scott Snyder arc uh, Endgame, the the Batman Endgame we talked about, yeah. the, is Joker supernatural? The idea was that there was some of that that. Uh, the idea that Dionysium was this element that was in like the Lazarus pit and stuff like that. And it may have been in the Ace Chemicals uh, uh, vat when he fell in. And maybe that's why he's always able to come back. Love it. That, that is thing. interesting writing for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Scott Snyder. So who would win in a fight between the Joker and Wolverine? <laughs> they would both just. Joker. It would just that's keep going episode. over and over and over again. Go, no, yeah. that's a whole episode. That's two episodes. It need like, he's like fucking uh, dismembered in uh, Hulk versus Wolverine. They're in like Tibet, and then he like he's crawling. Wolverine's Rips crawling up the side of fucking the Himalayas with no legs to find his fucking lower half. It's a wild. It's <laughs> wild. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the bad clone of Two Face comes back. So there you go, Zach. Uh, he's back. <laughs> Two Face has been captured. I like him already. But for some the reason. bad the bad clone breaks him out and kills a bunch of police officers so that there would be more heat on Two Face during this time. Uh, unfortunately, that's the oh, last I that we see. see of the bad clone. So, bad clone Two Face is trying to frame Two Face. Yes, uh, even first he's that bad. So, but then he's kind of good because he's going against a bad guy. Yeah, it's it's kind of like in in Dark Detective, he shows up and because Two Face refuses to rat out Joker to Batman, the clone is like, "I'll rat him out to you because I hate Two Face, so I'm going to do the opposite of anything he does." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Pat, Batman's so like, is he just a Harvey don't uh, Harvey Dent clone? More, he's not Two Face, right? No, he's an Harvey Dent clone, like but all of his bodies, body, yeah. yeah, all of his body is scarred. <laughs> okay, that's right. Even yeah. his dick, even his dick, unfortunately, probably, and that's a, why he's got a vendetta. Especially, yeah. he's got dick. goggles on too. I guess it's because both eyes have no eyelids. So uh, yeah, probably. Uh, little goggles on, I guess, to keep them. Warm. Damn, that sucks. So there's I've no just one face eyes. out there anymore. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, Joker kills him. Joker kills uh, the Harvey Dent. Oh, yeah, the, the, put him out good of his one. misery. That's, yeah, he was boring anyway. Yeah, and he was just like kind of a hellish Harvey existence. And, and Harvey's like, no. But Bruce, Bruce is like, God damn it, that was my friend. My that was Harvey. I was gonna, so uh, I was gonna send him to Rob Banks for me. There Harvey are more... Dent has to be libertarian. By the way. <laughs> I just gotta say. Oh, totally. Yeah. There are more zealous villains coming that are uh, all libertarian. No, oh, that okay. are in this in this comic book. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait. I love the Z-listers, man. The F League, what I call him last time? Killer Moth. Do you know Killer Moth? <laughs> that is familiar. He's in... He was in that game. Um, in the Batman Batman video game, Deep Oh, Dive. yeah. He was. They pulled him out for Batman... 89. NES. Yeah, yeah. On NES. And Firefly was in it or some shit? Yeah, they Deadshot had a lot of... Deadshot was in that? Who? Deadshot was in that. Deadshot's in it? Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. How familiar are you guys with Killer Moth? Second Wolfie. Jerry. Not at all. <laughs> Jury Walker, yeah. Jury Walker. We got the full spectrum. Although we don't have I know, a totally casual Batman fan, though. I know actually. Arthur from The Tick. <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> that might might actually have some influence. I mean, I know Richard the Tick might have from influenced that. Or bad the Mothman from prophecies. That. He's a kind of a moth, too. <laughs> Killer Cross. Killer. Killer Cloth. That's a whole other Z. Killer thing. Clock. Killer Clock. <laughs> the Clock King. <laughs> when, when the clock strikes two, you dead. Uh, it, Killer Moth. His you main did. claim to fame is that he was the one who debuted that pushed Barbara Gordon to become Batgirl. It's the main uh, uh, thing. But he he's basically in a moth outfit, and okay. he tried to be uh, the Batman, but for criminals. Okay. So apparently, Killer <laughs> Moth. Was is terrorizing London and Batman decides that he's going to go to London. So a majority of Dark Detective 3 actually takes place in England. That's uh, cool. That's pretty cool. Evan Gregory is not in the England sections though. I'm afraid to, to report that. Oh, uh, Evan's not. <laughs> not to your Evan Gregory. country. Uh, <laughs> turns out this is just an excuse for him to get away from Gotham so that he can leave reminders of Silver St. Cloud behind. So Silver is still in Dark Detective 3. Uh, by the way, oh, my beloved betrothed. Alfred tries to bring up to Batman that he's just there to distract himself from Silver, but uh, Batman refuses to hear about it and decides to go to London anyway to fight some crime and kick some ass. So he shows up, and here's a big deep dive. The next big deep dive, deep cut villain 
is that he encounters the vampire Dala when he's there. Dala? Now, this is a surprise sequel deep dive to our Batman vs. Dracula deep dive from last Halloween. Dala was one of the vampires who Batman encountered way back in 1939 in Detective Comics 31. Well, goddamn. She was helping the monk. Have you read this oh. issue? The monk? Yeah, the monk? like the mad monk. He's yeah, like a vampire monk. werewolf. Yeah, creature. so there's this dude in all of them in the red monk outfit, but his assistant was named Dala, who is a vampire. Okay. And at the end, Batman uh, loads up some silver bullets into a gun and shoots them to death. I never really imagine a, an, a, a vampire being an assistant. I think I, I always imagine a vampire's having assistants. Junior vampire. Yeah, type. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But anyways, it, it, this actually Junior does... vampires. Copy that shit. <laughs> it's actually... Copyright that shit. Yes. Like vampire high school or some shit. I, I don't Junior know how old vampires. she is, but I'm sure she's probably... She seems like she's an adult. She's over 18 for sure. Okay, everybody? Well, she's definitely over 18, not just in form, <laughs> but also in, in age age because... Uh, so Batman acknowledges he tried to kill Dala and the monk. <laughs> I'm upsetting Ben, I feel like. In this like. issue. <laughs> uh, and this experience, apparently Batman says that uh, his experience trying to kill Dala and the monk, or trying to kill vampires, led him to make the no-kill rule. So that's interesting. Dala, vampires? Dala's interesting name is D-A-L-A? D-A-L-A, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dala, however, wants Batman to kill her and take her life uh, because she's tired of living. Because apparently those silver bullets don't you know, didn't do shit. Which makes me wonder where the hell the monk is. Yeah, so what are the vampire rules in this too, you know? Yeah, well, silver bullets don't work. And she's just... It's been, she's what if spent Azrael showed up wearing a bunch of crosses and shit, then... Oh, yeah, just send Azrael after all of the vampires. Yeah. I feel like we're solving a lot of the DC Universe yeah. problems here. Lazarus great, pit yeah. for everybody, <laughs> and yeah. send Azrael after all the vampires. The, the Order of Dumas going after vampires. It actually sounds pretty fucking <laughs> actually, sweet. Actually, they should do this. We DC, need to, listen to us. We need to put a pin in this and actually write this out. Uh, when does uh, DC become public domain? Got a while, right? <laughs> we'll it's on the way. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you that much. Coming pretty soon. Fleischer Superman is public domain, That's so true. it's only a matter of time. Yes. Batman decides uh, he's obviously not going to kill this vampire, but he decides to put her through. There's apparently this anti-vampire clinic. Can you clinic. kill that which is undead? Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Apparently you can he cure break it, his rule. Oh, okay. So he takes it to an anti-vampire clinic in England, apparently. Anti-vampire clinic. <laughs> apparently they're going to uh, not make her a vampire anymore and help her be out in the sun. I don't know how this works, but Engelhart's writing check, Wolfie. This on this is one. getting into the Doctor Double X territory <laughs> again. <getting> yes, <laughs> psychedelically brilliant. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so he spends some time watching the sunrise with Dala every morning, so that uh, she can test if she can withstand the stun. But they're also kind of falling in love at the same time. But Batman doesn't want to be in love because of the whole silver thing. This is very weird. Uh, Batman's falling in love with a vampire. Yes. It's so like he falls in love with every chick he fucking meets, dude. I, I don't I was not expecting overcompensating. This to be the yeah. Get that cape <laughs> off your wing. Yeah. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> it'll help the blood flow at least. God damn it. He's just in a BDSM and he can only get hard when he's in the Batman costume. Dude, there's maybe. obviously a lot like of whips. Bruce has all these Bruce has all these inadequacies, so he's just all, you know. Uh, yes. A lot of the like the, the Arkham City art or whatever with Catwoman and and, and Batman looks a little bit BDSM-y for yeah. sure. I'm into it. It's definitely an element. Again, Engelhart. <laughs> we have Engelhart to thank for all the Batman sex life. More whips. Batman. <laughs> More pointy Sexual. things. Batman finds Killer Moth here. Oh, right, yeah. The and, <laughs> yes. Killer, it's Killer Moth, is, so he's British. No, he's not. He just goes to London. Oh, I wish he was. We have another British. We have another British villain. Jeez, what is his day job? I am the most vile villain in London. <laughs> Kill him. My moth. name is Killer Moth. It's an expensive Any... trip <laughs> yeah. to go start some shit. Gotta, killer, well, Killer Moth. Kudos on him. However, claims that he was set up. Jack the Ripper has <laughs> nothing on me. He's a fucking <laughs> pansy ass motherfucker. <laughs> Killer he's just, but he's just like nothing compared to the Joker, you know? Like <laughs> yeah. The Joker's always like always the top. America's got a fucking, um, what do you call it, monopoly on evil. Yeah. Actually, you know what? The British are pretty good at it. Let's take that we'll back. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Killer. The sun never set on the British Empire, and it never set on my fucking evil. Uh, Killer Moth claims he was set up. 
So Killer Moth <laughs> is uh, going on the hunt. So again, this is where like Killer Moth being the anti-Batman comes in. I was bamboozled. Because <laughs> he starts interrogating criminals in order to find out who set him up. And so that's where we meet the real villain of Dark Detective 3, a British villain. It's not Killer Moth. One. It's not Killer Moth. <laughs> nor is it Dala. Nor is it the Two-Face clone. It's actually the Penguin. So we get into Englehart's version of the Penguin. Zach might, Zach's gonna definitely going to find this interesting because I know that you didn't really like Englehart's previous Penguin story with the Melee Penguin. However, Penguin has a much bigger role in this one and a more interesting plan. So Englehart specifies here that Penguin is British and grew up in London. Uh, I know, right? So it's kind of foreshadowing because this is written a little shortly after 2005 or so. So this is foreshadowing. So Englehart predicted the yeah. Batman as well. This is what you're telling me right now. Well, we don't know if he, if the Batman version of Penguin is going to be British. We it's know he's being, it's being shot in England. Yeah, and, don't but, we? But it's 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 set for Gotham, and also they're in Chicago right now yeah, as of this recording. Yeah. But we know the Arkham version of Penguin is British, and so is the Telltale version. So it still is that was something. For you think that sorry. Sorry, to, yeah. Is that something you think is becoming more like uh, accepted or more prevalent for that character? I it think could so. Be. Yeah. It could be. Actually, for me, it had to been years him since I had seen Btaz, mm-hmm. and so I just forgot what the penguin sounded like in that. And uh, the Arkham version got in my brain, and, and so at first to learn that he wasn't British, I was like, "Oh yeah, that is right." I, I, I would my I had totally switched in my head. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have a preference? Penguin is British like versus it, American. Let's go around the room. Well, Wolfie doesn't like don't British like when, people, so. Well, that's one thing. I don't, <laughs> I don't like when Andrew calls Batman the animated series B-Taz. <sighs> well, that, they, tough. The actual creators do call it that. I don't care. It sounds stupid. Oh, well, you're going to have to get over that <laughs> one. What about X-Taz for X-Men the animated series? X-Taz. Nope, I've never heard either. that. All shorthand is dumb. Anyway, <laughs> I'll take a British penguin. Okay. <laughs> I, li- I like British Penguin too, but it is it obviously you have to change. When did he immigrate yeah. from that from London or wherever mm-hmm. to Gotham? You it's have to comics. change that little backstory. But other <laughs> right, than that, yeah. yeah, it's it's fine with me. Uh, Zach, it gives him a little bit more color, you know, a little bit more texture to that character. An immigrant taken over this city. more diverse. Yeah, in, in, a, in a sense. How much of an immigrant <laughs> is a British guy? I'm taking over your jobs. <laughs> My penguin is American. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Make Make penguin American great man. again. There is something <laughs> about... I penguin, mean, although it's true, he does wear a cape on his dick. <laughs> got, that so, is true. <laughs> he doesn't That's have, why I... <laughs> I don't know why that, that cracks me up. All right. Okay. Uh, I, I do like... I don't know. I'm still very much about... I think either one works. I think, You're a traditionalist. Yeah, as a traditionalist, I, I do. I'm used to more American Penguin. To me, English I Penguin is just kind of taking advantage of the fact he's a dude in a monocle. That's the thing. It, it, yeah. It's his. It's his get up, and yeah. with a fucking like um, umbrella. Honestly, a lot of Americans don't carry around umbrellas. Well, I guess they do in New York. Mm-hmm. If you drive, you don't really need an umbrella. You know what I mean? But anyway, I just him like, being British seems like yeah. such a natural thing. I feel like Colin Farrell's Penguin is going to be American. Very yeah, well, actually, very well could be. you do hear his voice in the thing. Yeah, he sounds kind of crazy. Like, yeah, more yeah. Like gangster affect. It's yeah. like a very quick clip when he's in the car. You like hear mm-hmm. him say something. It's definitely not British. Yeah, mm-hmm. this guy's crazy or some shit. Like yeah. That. Dude, yeah. his he's got to have scenes with Falcone. So like to have. Oh my god, do him and Tutoro. Yeah, yeah, him and Tutoro in the in shared scenes. It's gonna be yeah. some Oscar level shit probably. Hopefully. Hopefully, I will say that I do. Sorry to cut you off. I will say that I do love the animated series voice actor of the Penguin. Oh, do you mean the uh, B-Taz yeah. version? <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually don't mind that. I was just I was trying to make it a joke, but it's stupid. Honestly, um, what I don't even fuck really. I mean, either way, this is B-Taz kind of like Batman, it could be it could be either series. way. Uh, it's like American. anytime. It's like the first time LOL showed up on the scene, and you're just like. I'm never going to type LOL. And then like a week later, you're like, LOL. <laughs> Raffle. It's one of those that like is fine if you type it out, but I would never say it out loud. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, yeah, it, for it sure. Just, you're a moron well. if you say LOL out loud. Wait, <laughs> we just lost a whole what we're just supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, Paul Williams, right? Yes, Paul, Paul Williams. Williams. Paul Williams. And I think he's that British, guy's isn't he? voice is amazing. Yes, British. Is he? He's I can't got, remember. I, know, I mean, I know he's a musician your and a singer, but I, I thought he might be British. This British version of Penguin also is weirdly like the Penguin from Batman Returns because he hides out specifically in the sewers as well as around an old zoo. 
So there's kind mm. of a combination of a few fan favorite penguins. Okay. It's All kind right. of his escape route and his ammunition, isn't it? Yeah. He needs those animals and birds more or less to. A little bit. He's the mechanized giant the armored rubber penguins. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, there's Actually, no Actually, I dig the penguin now that, we're, now that we're dissecting his whole existence. Yes. He's him pretty, him being awesome. the uh, top gangster is cool. Yeah. 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 And to Englehart is his second favorite villain behind Joker, it seems like. Oh, so, really? Yeah. He, he wow. considers Penguin to be number two. I, I always feel like your casual Batman fan, Joker's number one and Riddler's number two. That's, for some reason, mm. that's my image of the casual Batman fan. I wouldn't yeah. even call him casual. That's just like mainstream, like which underwear are you going to buy? Zach doesn't seem to agree. I what, do you, what would you of, say? I feel like the Riddler's been out of the limelight for so long now. Yeah. The, also confused for Joker. So it's and Joker and Bane, maybe, you think? I would say Bane or Deathstroke or somebody like uh, in that vein. I feel like there's a big camp of people that really want Deathstroke in a movie. And yeah. he's cool. It's because I'm just like, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. I mean, Joe Joe Manganiello would kill that role. Penguin decides that uh, he had originally set up Killer Moth in order to kill Batman. I don't know why he thought Killer Moth was going to pull that off. Uh, so he decides to <laughs> hire. He's like, I love Killer I Moth. Set up, I, I set you up. <laughs> why didn't you do it? So, I was framed. Yes. Uh, so he hires Deadshot instead to keep Batman distracted. Uh, so now Batman has to deal with, this is very crowded, Deadshot, Dala, Killer Moth, and Penguin all in England. None of them the real villains. Oh, well, Penguin's the real villain. Oh, remember. yeah, that's right. So Deadshot goes after Batman on Penguin's orders. Uh, and there's a great monologue here. He lives to fight crack. That made sense once. But these days, everybody's a crook. Kids download MP3s. The government tortures people. All the same idea. Everybody's getting theirs. And morality is just for show. I don't waste time with the show. Good people should be helped. Bad people should be killed. Don't agree with who's good and who's bad? Get your own gun. Simple. Call me bad people if you want, but I'm not. I kill people who deserve it. I'd say that's a much deeper. Zach's like, yeah, damn right. <laughs> Deadshot's wicked. I like Deadshot more and more every time he's brought up. Yeah. Fucking killer, bro. There's definitely a lot more uh, insight into Deadshot's characterization or mindset, at least in this in this unmade comic that is versus cool. the last time when he reinvented so, yeah. Deadshot. So is the, cool. is the script version of the comic out there or the details? It is on, like, how do you know? Yeah, it's on steveenglehart.com. Okay. He decided to <laughs> do okay. a pirated version and put it downloaded on his website. Okay, I see. Uh, I think I'm self-publishing. It. He's self-publishing it. He, he, he was just like, or, you know, if you like it, you can buy uh, the DC officially published version of this. Oh, wait, there isn't one, is what he put there. So, <laughs> morons. <laughs> so, so it's some big beef that he's... Yeah, no, I, I don't think he ever wants to write uh, Batman for DC again after this. Okay. Oh, yeah? Has yeah. He, is he kind of gone from writing the writing game now, or...? I think if he's going to do it, he's going to do it independently. He's living off royalties at the moment. Yeah, like because they he's even working tried for to bring Image, him, maybe they they even tried to have him collaborate with Neil Adams for Detective Comics number one thousand. I don't see those guys getting along. Uh, apparently, <laughs> they did. They are friends. They they are friends. They are friends. Okay. Yeah, dude, I swear to God, man, I'm in fucking I'm in Comic Con. He starts talking about I remember this. black people don't at that time didn't even know how to draw black people. I had to teach black people how to draw John Stewart. He, <laughs> what? Neil Adams was Whoa. saying shit like that. You know why? Because most black people were taught how to draw black people from other white people. And I'm thinking, dude, aren't you white? <laughs> <laughs> Zach's don't. face is like, oh my god, my hero. <laughs> dude, don't. He just somebody's like, cut his mic, cut his mic. <laughs> don't quote just, me on this, oh but god. I'm. God. I mean, look, Andrew, I, this is from a memory, but yeah, it's like what? I was in the fucking. Uh, I was watching, and I was just like. You really want to go public with this shit, bro? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I think Adams is. I'm up, he's. It's. He believes in some conspiracy theories. I think he's a flat earther or something. Will okay. Oh, wow. We're gonna we're gonna research this. We're gonna research let's research this. this before we leave this in. Yes. Uh, but we apparently separate the art from the artist now. Yes. No. Keep the bold accusations. Uh, in. We love them here. <laughs> I think yeah. Denny O'Neill made them. some hints too about how like. He and Neil Adams, like, they don't see the eye to eye on anything else except for what they collaborate in, in the stories. You'd be surprised. Like I've said before, Penn and Teller don't hang out. They just work Makes together. Sense. You know? Some people are just work buds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
I killed the conversation. How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> kind of don't want to get back into the rest of the dark. Back detective. to the scripts. Let's yeah. do it. Who, let's talk about who we get to cancel next. Okay. Neil Adams, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> we got the cancel stamp. Oh, man. Cancel. I, I, that, now it's all I want to know, yes, though. I'm yes. getting my phone right after we finish recording <laughs> I, this. I'll have to look into this. Neil yes. Adams' crazy beliefs. Yes. So the <laughs> next episode is going to be like, Neil Adams, racist or extremely <laughs> racist? <laughs> I have just, a whole bunch of autographs kidding, Neil. Neil Adams stuff over here. I know you listen to the show, Neil. I do have a slight joking. vendetta against him because I showed him Cape and Cal, this documentary yeah. I made, in which Dead Man shows up and he was like, the the makeup is absolutely terrible. And it's just like crushing my... He said something <laughs> to that effect. Crushing my dream. I was like an earlier... Fil- early film, ma- film, you know, I was trying filmmaking, and it was just like it's not even your makeup; it's the it's the cosplayer's makeup. I know, and he, I was just like, I thought it was cool, and he was just like crushing me right in the middle of Comic Con. <laughs> he was just like, he was like, what kind of dead man is this? You know, he That's, he was it was bad. Geez. It was bad. There's been so no. I'm dead, biased, everyone. There's been no dead man live action version. You think he'd at least be grateful to see that? And, and he was Andrew, not. He was like artists, early young artists, usually aren't hard enough on their own work. He was telling me that I was, you need to be harder on this. And uh, actually, that was good <laughs> Take advice. Take this time I taught this young black man how to draw a young boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he was just being really satisfied about the whole thing. He was ungrateful at first. <laughs> <laughs> of course he was. <laughs> so then I had him read my copy of Malcolm X. <laughs> yeah. My biography of my <laughs> illustrated graphic novel of Malcolm X. <laughs> Written That's and get, drawn Neil. by yours truly, Neil Adams. This is what you get when you talk shit on Andrew's okay, movie. We definitely need to do a deep dive into Neil Adams, though, because Krista Kroma did uh, request that we do Batman Odyssey. Okay. Nice. Have you read? Right. He's a knowledgeable individual. Have you read Batman Odyssey, Zach? Ugh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, I've had two, one good experience with Neil and one not so great one. And You've met him, too. Person. Okay. Yeah, I've met him at least like three times, and the first time he, the first couple of times he was great. He he signed the stuff. He seemed really friendly. And then when I got him to sign this Two Face cover, he was like very just brash and standoffish. Like I was like not going to pay for it or something. He's like, well, it's yeah. gonna be like such and such. And I was just like, yeah, I get it. I'm not. I'm not like yeah. stupid. I was. Gonna... Hey, so anyway, I, that was kind of like peeing my cornflakes, and then. <laughs> The Odyssey thing is like, I mean, I know that he's getting older, but I don't think I'm just not as big of a fan of his artwork now. It's a little uh, too loose for me. And Odyssey is like interesting. I don't know. The story is just bizarre. I remember. Oh, I how got do you it feel that he color. draws black people though? <laughs> <laughs> In terms of artists as they evolve and stuff, I was curious. However, what you thought of Marshall Rogers from Strange Apparitions to Doctor Tefkiv? Because it does seem like there's a bit of a difference. In how he draws it, or do you feel like it's? Um, I like that he incorporates stippling quite a bit into like the shading, especially on like the parts with the Joker and the haunted house. You can see like even the way they scanned it, there's like little dots there. So I thought that was mm-hmm. kind of cool. But everything still feels really like solid and structured. Um, yeah, his stuff is still really good. The only thing I thought is that Bruce looked a little bit like too neutral sometimes, like mm. when he was reacting to something, but. No, I, I mean, I was a fan of the artwork when the book first came out. Not sure. Not sure. All I, right. I like how he did. I, I liked his Two-Face. I really loved his Two-Face. Uh, the- I loved his Evan Gregory, so. <laughs> <laughs> Evan Gregory. Do you want this copy of Dark Detect? You can keep it if you want. I don't Evan like Gregory. him that much. <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. It's like, never mind. Jeez. <laughs> Deadshot and Batman, however, here's... Okay, so Inkart really recontextualizes Deadshot. Let's go back to Detective. We're going back to the script now? (laughs) Okay. All right, let's do it. (laughs) Deadshot and Batman end up in a fight only for them both to realize that Penguin's just using Deadshot to distract Batman because Penguin's real plan is to unleash a pandemic. Surprise, Batman in the time of coronavirus-like pandemics, everybody. Wow. Long-ass titles again. (laughs) I gotta type that much again. I just got the chills. So he's what kind of pandemic though? A flu-like virus? A flu-like virus, bird flu specifically. Is it really putting bird flu inside these penguin eggs and having his penguins distribute it? So we have another penguin eggs. So it's (laughs) it's right out of Batman Returns where he's hooking up all his pet penguins with these bombs. 
Now, as far as I'm concerned, Englehart never said that he liked Batman Returns, but it seems like he's awfully being reminiscent about it. <laughs> he didn't he, say he by didn't the like way, it, though. <laughs> they stole every one of my good ideas for that shitty sequel, too. <laughs> uh, Pen- you're there to support him. Penguin does have a speech as well to oh, the yeah, Penguin. I am DC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he, he clicks the Thanos uh, gauntlet, yeah. Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, yeah. And Batman's black. No, just kidding. Do you want to do? <laughs> That's coming up in the John Ridley uh, oh, Batman. Yeah. So it has come to this. Oswald Cobblepot, to the manor born, resides in a sewer. What if it had been different? I was rich. I could have lived in my clubs like all my contemporaries. My crapulous contemporaries who would never allow me into their clubs. Needle knows they called me and Waddle Bucket. And of course, Penguin. I had no place in their society, so I stole their treasures for my delectation. And into the bargain, I came to play my great game against the Batman, the only fitting foe, if I may say, for a gentleman. That was Penguin, everybody. Pretty good, uh... Uh, dialogue there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's interesting. Yeah, Inglehart. Inglehart's good at dialogue. Inglehart's huh? good with the characterization of this. I. I, 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 I got to say, early on, when I was in my late teens, early twenties, mm-hmm. I really attached myself to Kevin Smith and Tarantino because I was so into dialogue. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not even that Kevin Smith was like a nerdy bro. Mm-hmm. It was like I was super into dialogue. I keyed into that early on, and I had to kind of, in my script writing classes. I remember being told you you need to stop focusing on dialogue so much. I had mm-hmm. to become more visual. So I don't know. In when general, I read okay. comics now, I, I even now I'm like, oh, the dialogue's so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I like the characterization of this. It, there's always been an element of Penguin of being the outcast of like wanting acceptance from society yeah. and then lashing out at society for not giving him that acceptance. Yeah, so yeah. this fits right in. And so this version is of Penguin is back in England so that he can kill the people who had wronged him. Okay. There's a there's a scene where he's calling up all the different uh, women who he tried to propose to who spurned him and telling them that there's going to be a pandemic hitting, but uh, if they get with him, <laughs> the penguin they pandemic. can be uh, they can uh, quarantine together, <laughs> and of course Holy they always penguin pandemics, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, foul fiend. Those f- foul <laughs> foul. Um. So, yes, foul. <laughs> Word um, please. So he plans to kill off London with these bombs dispersing bird flu to everyone. And this is where Deadshot is like, I won't stand for this. So Deadshot and Batman team up against Penguin over here. So this is cool. Nice. Uh, and their first lead is Penguin's aunt. Penguin's aunt in England is uh, Lady Lucretia Cobblepot. <laughs> <laughs> there is precedent, however, for Penguin Lucretia. having an innocent aunt. Uh, the first time was in Aunt Miranda Cobblepot in a strip called Oswald Who? In 1946, this is a comic book strip in the in the Sunday comic book strips, uh, written by Al Schwartz. It was the first uh, of all comic fandom or continuity to reveal that Penguin's real name was Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot. Okay. Penguin caught, I mean, uh, Batman caught Penguin with a letter addressed to Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot, and Penguin I was like, "Get Chesterfield as part of it." Yeah, he's just Chesterfield. Like, yes. And Batman's like, you're stealing this letter for Oswald Cobblepot. And Penguin's like, no, bitch, I am Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> and it's no, from bitch. Click, click, boom. It's from my Aunt Miranda who's coming to visit. And so the whole story was Miranda. Uh, Penguin knew that if Aunt Miranda knew that he was a criminal, it would break her heart. So Batman and Robin have to pretend that they are Penguin's friends <laughs> in order to <laughs> love it, not break Aunt Miranda's heart. And that was the first story that. Penguin's true identity was revealed. Al Schwartz wrote this. Now Schwartz. That's before yes. his time. May okay. the Schwartz be with you. Schwartz. <laughs> so, Schwartz. Ba- Batman meets Deadshot over at the ant's place, and they agree to interrogate this woman. We're back to Inglehart's. Inglehart's version. Yeah, yeah. 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 DD3. Yes. Unpublished. DD3 unpublished. Okay. Uh, Lady Cobblepot is ashamed, ashamed of her uh, nephew, <laughs> Penguin. Shame. And wants to help get him out in prison, basically. She wants to get him locked up. Okay. So she's ratting him out. Uh, she talks about how Penguin always wanted to live in the sewers <laughs> when he was a kid because it was his dream uh, as a boy to live in the sewers. He compared the London sewers to the caverns of the Arabian Nights that he the read London when he was a boy. sewers are a bit more posh yeah. than the other sewers across the world. <laughs> so 
All right. Shit's about to go off the reels here. <laughs> Batman is investigating Penguin with Deadshot. Uh, okay. But because of he's preoccupied, he misses his appointment, his daily appointment with, da- with Dala to see the uh, the sunrise over at her anti-vampire, uh, anti-vampire clinic. So she feels that Batman has decided to abandon her and decides to curb into her dark side and turn into a vampire instead. And she's looking out the window and just who happens to be across the window. Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise as vampires. Killer Moth. Even played better. by Brad Pitt. <laughs> that would be awesome if he was actually. <laughs> He's already kind of in the MCU retroactively. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Deadpool, the Vanisher. Deadpool was a uh, yeah, subsumed or whatever by so, oh, right. MCU. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Dalek gives into her blood loss, lust to finds Killer Moth and kills him, turning him into a vampire. So now Killer Moth is a vampire. Love working that. with Dala. Wow. Which I guess works because he's got the moth thing. Yeah, he's a vampire moth. Was now. Jack the Ripper ever a fucking vampire? No killer moth is, though. <laughs> <laughs> so Dala and the vampire killer moth decide to attack Batman and Deadshot right when they're trying to fight Penguin. So it's Batman versus everybody now. Killer <laughs> Dala versus vampire everybody. killer moth. Deadshot. It's a bat god shit going on. Penguin. Penn and Teller. Penn Penn and Teller. Teller. Show up, but they're not. They're separate panels all the time. Batman's like, God not on the show. damn it. <laughs> I should have called Clark on this one. Uh, so Della <laughs> wants to make Batman and Deadshot her vampire servants, but Batman just wants to cure her. And as Dal is trying to convince Batman to join her, she ends up getting staked in the heart from behind and turns into ash. Oh, and it turns man. out Dala? This is Dala? Yeah. So Dala is out, but Killer Moth is around. She is kind of the red shirt of this whole thing. Yeah. Killer yeah. Moth is the one who killed her. Killer Moth decided to spare Batman and Deadshot of the fate that he has suffered before he disappears as a vampire. Deadshot uh, got blood drunk out of him, but didn't die, so he'll be okay. Anytime you can say the word blood drunk, you have to take that opportunity. Yeah, exactly. It's a great fucking word. Blood drunk Deadshot is blood uh, drunk. you know on the That's floor. That's a good in album name. <laughs> that is an al- uh, It's a Children of Bodom, blood drunk. That Finnish Deadshot. metal band. They have an album called. Yeah, I knew that. that. That's what I meant. That's why I said that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Penguin criticizes Batman for not killing Killer Moth, and Batman brings up that nothing would stop him from killing all the others. Uh, if he were to kill, if he would start with killing Killer Moth, and so he won't fall into that darkness. Similar to what he says to Jason Todd at uh, the end of Under the Red Hood, where he's just like, all I ever wanted to do was kill him. So that ripped off Inglehart too. According to Inglehart, <laughs> yes. It was probably written around the I've same exact time. I've been saying it for years. Yes. Uh, but I think this is where Inglehart brings it home, because this seems like all random as fuck in terms of the amount of ca- the cast and characters and stuff. And Zach agrees as he's nodding along with me. Uh, Batman Kill thinks about how close he was to being Deadshot, who's, who had told him earlier, he's like, hey, like I also was a rich guy who wanted to do something else with my life. Because Deadshot started as a vigilante. So Deadshot's similar to him. Killer Moth is similar to him, because Killer Moth st- studied his methods and wanted to be like him for Kim. As a criminal, Deadshot fights Deathstroke at times, right? They Probably, have to. Yeah, that's like that's like makes as much sense as uh, the thing fighting the Hulk. It's they like have the a duel. first thing they do. They have a duel in the War of Jokes and Riddles. Okay, one works yeah. for Joker, one works for Riddler, and they both try to kill each other, but all only end up killing people who are in between because they're so good. My my <laughs> so. my my money's on Deathstroke. He's yeah. he's cooler. Mm. Sorry, Will Smith. <laughs> Sorry, Bradley Striker. <laughs> Uh, Brad Dala. Is, sorry, Brad, you, Brad Striker is cool as fuck, but yeah. Deathstroke's so cool. Dala um, had the whole dark side thing and caving into her dark side, and then Penguin, of course, being you know someone of the manor born as well. So everybody has some, sort of, born. has some sort of weird connection to Batman. And uh, Batman says to himself, quote, I spent, all, I spent my life warring on criminals, but not killing them. I stand forever on the razor's edge. Rational? Or crazy. Living he, on the edge. <laughs> standing on the edge. This music is on in the background edge. as he's thinking about it. <laughs> so he's like, what's that, Scarface? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> rational or crazy. And then he looks at Take Penguin and limit. Blood Drunk Deadshot and he's like, rational. And then he leaves. So, okay. Uh, he, the whole thing has been kind of about, about like, was Silver right that his rationality, uh, is his rationality going to be something that prevents him from, I guess, ever being successful or ever being happy? That type of thing. Is it a bad thing? Uh, and he, he's come to terms with his rationality is what makes him who he is. It's kind of uh, the point of Dark Detective 3. That's the uh, character arc for Batman. For Batman, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's sort of because he compares himself to all the villains in this case. Right. And he just comes to this realization in the third act. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So he decides to go back home to Gotham. In the meantime, there's been this entire separate story with Silver St. Cloud. 
Silver Saint Gregory. Silver Saint. Well, she's not Gregory yet because remember she doesn't oh, want died. to. She doesn't want to marry Evan Gregory. Oh God damn it! She missed the boat. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> so in this version, Ingo Hart has said that he always wanted Silver Saint Cloud's stories to be on separate pages from Batman, just to show that they are entirely worlds apart. In this, okay, even further. She's what, trying. Wait, wait. What happened to Killer Moth? Killer Moth is a, he's off as a vampire in London. Oh, okay. So he lives. <laughs> he lives as, as a vampire. Dead. Yeah. Okay. Which is pretty fucking All sweet, right. in my opinion. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, so Silver St. Cloud has a separate story. She tries to support Evan Gregory as a friend, but he wants her to stay with him as his first lady. Uh, and she okay. refuses. So Evan starts taking an advice from a friend who's been hiding inside of his own house and starts influencing Evan into making dirty deals against his opponent in the uh, govern, you know, governor's race. Um, and Silver at one point walks in to find out that Evan has been taking political advice from Two Face. So, okay. This is what's interesting. <laughs> in the next segment, Dark Detective 3, Evan was extremely depressed over losing both his left side and his woman. The t- th- then Two Face came to him and had a heart to heart, in which Two Face convinced him that life is meaningless, that the woman in his life is beyond his reach, and that the handsome, blonde, upright politician should make a 180 degree turn to the dark side, which he did. In Dark Detective 2, it's Two-Face talking to a guy who's also been heavily damaged on the left side, another golden boy politician. So it makes sense that Two-Face can convince Evan Gregory to join him. They share a bond. In The Dark Knight, it's the Joker talking to Harvey Dent. Those two have nothing in common. And Harvey Dent has hated the Joker in the entire movie. Plus, who takes career advice from the Joker? Especially Heath Ledger's Joker. It was a storyline they liked, in search of a reason to be in their movie. Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll throw this out to the group then. Does Englehart have a point here in terms of Two-Face corrupting Evan Gregory being similar to Joker corrupting Harvey Dent, or being better than Joker corrupting Harvey Dent into Two-Face in The Dark Knight? No. Eh. Zach says no. Let's start with Zach. No. Yeah. Well, why though? Okay. <laughs> Can you elaborate okay. on that? Um, well, I don't know. I think he's just, as usual, seeing some similarities where there may not be. I just think that I like the one in the Dark Knight better because it's got the Joker in it. But nurse um, Joker. Yeah, it's got the Which nurse makes Joker. Even more it, fun. So that's fantastic. Hi. I just like the fact that he kind of like <laughs> he, the Joker, convinces him that everything is meaningless. And I think that works better in that story. Now, I haven't read the script for DD3. Um, I mean, I think it's cool that Two-Face is influencing Evan Gregory, too. I just am speaking from my experience of liking The Dark Knight better. I will say there is no actual scene where with Harvey talking to Evan. Oh. Uh, It's just Englehart being a fucking badass. Yeah, I forgot to mention this. Like, (laughs) the main time that we see... It, it, it's, he's already we never see the first meeting between Evan and Harvey uh, it's uh, we find out there's somebody behind the curtain in Evan's house who has been kind of talking to him already and then like Silver walks in and finds out it's Two-Face so it's like already there so that kind of puts another in his house? yeah he's just hiding out <laughs> <laughs> standing behind the curtain daily <laughs> pay no attention to the man behind the curtain <laughs> It's kind of weird, Behi- yes. Behind the dick cape. <laughs> <laughs> it flaps in the wind. Yes. I enjoy the breeze. Yes. Uh, Wolfie, what do you think? Um, I think, yeah, it probably sounds like Inglehart, as much as I love it, the guy, is uh, he's kind of reaching for his own, uh, uh, what would you say, for his own praise. Hoisting up uh, his own petard or some shit. It, because the scene in Dark Knight makes a lot of sense that you'd have this like anarchistic mm-hmm. character breaking down, systematically breaking down this like structured law and order uh, politician guy. So I don't know. It's yeah. It's it'd be in Englehart's mind. It's more compelling if it's like Two Face talking essentially to Aaron Eckhart, <laughs> right? You know, the Evan character or whatever, yeah. but. They're, like who the fuck cares about that really when in the dark Knight the film uh is so pivotal that to have these like tentpole villains interacting in such a complex way that 
Inglehart may need to get over himself a little bit. <laughs> you agree? Just as pretty much the same. Th- pretty much same answer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, I, I do. I, the main thing that I think Inglehart has a point on is I, I feel like it is a more believable connection between Two Face and Evan versus. Do you think Joker this is one of his better points? Harvey. I think it's one of his better points. He's a but good I, writer, though. I would also, yeah, but I would also, say, it's one of his better points. But I wouldn't say that it necessarily means that this movie is a complete ripoff on his ideas. No, no, no. Again, no. it doesn't really. We're going point by point, though. You've already got Joker in this movie. You already got Two Faces origin, and it. it's kind of natural for them to cross paths at some point. What's Engelhart's best, uh, you know, a point that he can make? Where does he have? Where does his argument hold the most water? What argument holds the most water? For Probably him? just the in general the the amount of coincidences coincidences between his Evan Gregory story and the Harvey Dent portrayal in The Dark Knight, and even okay. that's kind of like mm, even that's not great. Even that's yeah, yeah. even that's kind of like eh, like I can see how the Nolans could arrive to that on their own without having even read this mm-hmm. at all. Aren't there a lot of like not just Engelhart's uh, Harvey Dent, but a lot of Harvey Dents look like that in the comics as well? No. Actually, oh really? It's just this no one. Blonde ones, no. Oh yeah, that's there's, right. There's very few blonde about. ones. Almost all the comic book versions has the courtroom scene with this, with the, with the acid in the face. Uh, the Dark Knight was the first time there was a love triangle with Harvey. Really? Uh, it's um, but it's still so. thank you for smoking though. Really? Yeah, I, I know. I'm I'm not I'm not yeah. disagreeing with you. I'm just saying that I think that there's enough coincidences still to for it to make up with it. I do think he has. I I can't blame him for seeing similarities, but I also don't think it's to the point where. The entire movie is a ripoff of Dark Detective. <laughs> like the Nolans were scouring his website for this <laughs> yes. script, and they're yeah. like, "It's fucking gold," and DC <laughs> doesn't know what they had. Let's just get, let's just cut out Deadshot, Dalla, Killer Moth, the Penguin in the yeah. sewer, uh, and any of other that type of stuff. Goyer's, Goyer's <laughs> like, ah, oh, those characters are gay anyway. Yeah, <laughs> Inglehart's like, they took out all my best shit. <laughs> <laughs> they so, copied me, but Goyer's so words, not stuff. mine. Okay, so. <laughs> Silver discovers Two Face is helping Evan Gregory basically do all these dirty tactics against his opponents in the in the race for being governor, and they end up tying her up. But Silver escapes and ends up showing up at Wayne Manor. Uh, in the meantime, Bruce has returned back home, and Alfred reminds Bruce, saying, "Quote: You won't kill, and you won't love. Only one of those is rational, Master Bruce. It's not the world that's out of kilter; it's you." So Alfred's kind of mm. like waking him up, that type of thing. Uh, and when they show up at Wayne Manor, Silver has already showed up in the Batcave, and she shares that Two Face is has corrupted Evan Gregory. And Silver just knows how to get into the Batcave. Yeah, because Bruce mm-hmm. has showed her. Oh yeah, brother. that's right, that's right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Michael Goss Alfred lets her in. Yeah, that's <laughs> this way. I'm imagine. sitting there working. <laughs> oh hi, Vic. Come on in. Uh, Here's some vicious soir for yes. you. Um, <laughs> it's supposed to be cold, damn it. Two Face has corrupted Evan, but Evan is now the governor. So now we have uh, a Batman villain as a governor with Two-Face pulling the strings. And Batman realizes that she's in danger because she knows the secret. And he takes her into his arms and they make out and other stuff. Uh, and, and the script says, quote, it is in its way rational, as rational as love ever gets. So that's how he wraps up this theme of Batman's rationality and how it leads Batman and Silver to get together again at the end of uh, Dark Detective 3. According to Englehart. In his mind, Silver St. Cloud is the woman for Batman. The only reason why he had them break up in The Sign of the Joker was because he didn't feel like he wanted Len Wein or any of the comic writers afterwards to sort of pick up. He didn't want to leave anything for the other people, other writers to pick up. Oh, he's really covering his bases he was, there. Yeah, he was trying to cover the status quo. That's but when it's, interesting, like... yeah. When Inside baseball story. as to what directs DC canon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't want these other motherfuckers touching my shit. She's well, gonna die for a while. Also, the also the respect <laughs> to the other writers to let them do their own thing as opposed to being like writing them in the corner to be like, oh, now you yeah. got to deal with Batman's girlfriend. Maybe that maybe he is n- nicer than what I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His <laughs> last <laughs> issue, Batman proposes, and then he's out of yeah. there. Oh so. shit! I like to think of people as the most evil versions of, course, of, of course, themselves. Of so. I, I understand. I'm just going <laughs> off of the, the evidence that I have, uh, but in his mind like since now he can do dark detective at least at the time of this writing he was doing his own thing he's like let me explore that let me explore what it would be like if batman had a civilian girlfriend and she probably would be more down for the fact that yes you are going to be home late a lot (laughs) because you're going to be fighting the joker and deadshot and all that other stuff so uh the only i know Engelhart claims that they cribbed the the, 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 let me do that again (laughs) 
Yeah. I know that Engelhardt yeah. claims that uh, The Dark Knight Rises cribbed from Dark Detective 3, but the only thing that I see is Batman choosing love at the end of the store. That's the only thing that... He didn't write them in an Italian... Uh... No Italian cafe there's, outside. There's no. Love, you know, strong I, I once had this fantasy. I'd look across the way and I'd see you over there. Yeah, there's no, there's you no part like that. Blue balls the size of a tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was not the end of the Dark Detective saga. He wrote an outline for Dark Detective Four, and this actually sounds like <laughs> he just kept going. He's got DD sixteen going He's on got right DD now. In his yeah. veins. <laughs> this is going to be very short because there's, there's only a one page proposal for this, oh, okay. and it sounds fucking sweet. Actually, it sounds. I wanted. To, I'm like. Killer I want to see Croc this. versus Killer Moth. Let's do it. Uh, I don't know if there's a Killer Moth. Yeah, there's no Killer Moth in it, but it says Killer Batman. Killer Croc is in it. Killer Croc is in it. Yeah. Oh wow! I called it. Batman has to save Silver from a swarm of villains hired to kill her by the new governor and his two-faced advisor. Each effort takes, like the show Twenty Four, one hour from midnight to dawn. So each issue is one hour in the same night. They have to get from Wayne Manor to Election HQ in City Hall. From midnight to one a.m. is them racing the Batmobile, showing off its chops, and stopped by Killer Croc. From 1 to 2 a.m., Batman is wounded, Poison Ivy can cure him, and Silver has to get through to, to Ivy. From 2 to 3 a.m., they encounter Clayface, we don't know which Clayface, and it says Batman is not yet at full strength. From, from 3 to 4 a.m., they encounter Mad Hatter, Batman's at full strength but is up against an army of hat zombies. From 4 to 5 a.m., it's Hugo Strange's ghost, ghostly hijinks, and as that time, at that time, Evan Strange's is announced ghost. as the governor, as the governor of whatever state that Gotham is in. And then from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., they have to face off. Batman and Silver face off against Two-Face and Evan. Silver denounces Evan, and a massive scandal explodes to be explored in Dark Detective 5, which he never wrote. But <laughs> wow. that this is should have been promise. This should have been the third one. I know! It sounds so <laughs> cool. Get rid of all that... <laughs> Boring old England stuff and just get right to this. This sounds no, great. No, you need the fucking it kill them all. It sounds amazing. A 24-style Batman thing with each villain at every hour. Hugo Strange's ghost is back, which means Englehart is now... This is at the height thing. of 24 being a popular, too, when he oh, wrote yeah, this that script. Oh, yeah, that, too. I can see Englehart's watching TV like, I fucking love the Jack Bauer power hour. It's fucking amazing. Also, all my ideas are original. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 24 stole my <laughs> concept for a Batman issue. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> then you become his hype man. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, as I said before, Marshall Rogers passed away. Uh, Steve Englehart feels that Marshall Rogers' um, sort of feeling of being phased out of DC may have contributed to his death in terms of the, the sadness behind that. Uh, uh, I can't speak too much on that because I don't know that much uh, on their story. But uh, apparently there were some people, according to Englehart, who were not fans of Englehart and Rogers' Uh, at the time and didn't want them to continue with Dark Detective. So I don't know who those people were and I don't have many other details if on that. If you have some sort why. of like mm-hmm. emotional link to your co-collaborator, yeah. you probably don't want to continue that story, I guess. You right. know what I, I mean? mean he was it, still happens down to, all, it happens pretty often. He was still down to do it with the art, but DC... Oh, was, oh plug. DC was... Oh. Get me Rob Liefeld in here now. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to finish this book. <laughs> so what are your guys' thoughts on Dark Detective 3 and 4, the unmade versions? Sorry, what was that? Well, you heard what I had to say. That the four, the I, the concept for the fourth one is already way more exciting, and I feel like it could have it could have started off with showing how Evan Gregory had basically been seduced by the mm-hmm. dark side of right. of Two Face and all that stuff. So that's that is actually a really cool concept uh, to have Two Face kind of back into politics, um, yeah, you know, just in a different role. And then to have all these really good, like, classic Batman villains, um, you know, being involved with him and Silver St. Cloud, that's actually mm-hmm. really kind of cool and satisfying. It reminds me a little bit about the, it's like the last a couple years ago, there was a run, um, I think it was All-Star Batman, where oh, he Two-Face. was like, he had Two-Face, like, handcuffed yeah. to him, and all these, like, B-list villains were chasing after them, and it was, like, separated by time frames like that, so maybe they ripped off Englehart, but... <laughs> I can really, never get <laughs> never get I really the credit. Like the they one. never do the guy justice. <laughs> yeah, Dark Detective Four Everybody, sounds sweet. I wish it was written. Everybody's yes. ripping off Englehart, even David Fincher probably, Spielberg, <laughs> Tarantino most likely. <laughs> Tarantino at least cites his sources. At least, yeah. All right, Wolfie, your thoughts on three and four? Or this entire De- Dark Detective saga. 
Um, yeah, that fourth installment sounded pretty cool. I know, right? I already forgot what happened in the third. <laughs> <laughs> that was that with Batman was... versus everybody, though, right? Yes, that was yes. in England, the vampires. right? And yeah. Killer Moth and the vampires. Yeah. You know, through that whole discussion, I became more endeared to the Killer Moth, so <laughs> I liked that part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the vampire thing was cool. But yeah, you could have probably gotten rid of a little of that mess and maybe... That could have been... Like prologue. Yeah, prologue to Dark Zeta 3, three to, with yeah. the 24 style stuff, yeah. Yeah, because that's fun. And comics are supposed to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, what a stance you made today. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, I agree, though. your thoughts on this? Uh, I like the England stuff just because it's interesting whenever they leave their own like bubble, mm-hmm. which is Gotham, yeah. and then in the comics world... <laughs> They go to London, which has got like its own like caped crusaders going on there. I like right. them. I like them going to their own little environment there, which is cool. I'd love to have like Batman be or Bruce Wayne even be like, "What the fuck's going on here?" You know what I mean? Like a little bit fish out <laughs> yeah. of water kind of shit. I think that'd be cool if they did that. But so wait, what was actually written? Go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna ask: Does England in the DC universe have like a whole stable of other superheroes or like do other countries do they delve into that much There's, Batman has people from Batman Inc over there he has the Knight and okay, Squire right over there the Knight and Squire future deep dive that would be sweet cool. uh yeah and yeah I, I like I like that environment and Killer Moth is kind of funny I like him becoming a vampire so <laughs> I did like that but I mean I the, the 24 hour shit sounds awesome as fuck too yeah. so I think I liked three a little bit more than Zach did, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It was cool. It was fine. Yeah, nice. I liked nice. it. It's an, interesting ever... to know Inglehart more and more. Yeah. So DC would probably never produce these, right? Like just because they're the detachment from him, and he probably wouldn't give them to them or whatever. No, nah. he doesn't have to say okay though. That'd be cool if somebody like That's true. drew them out or some kind of they they did knockoff versions of the character just to have like. I don't know. And Engelhart's like, cool they rip me off again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's in his own feedback loop of being ripped off. Everything's my <laughs> idea. Um, yeah. But it would be cool to see some pages for some of these these concepts and some of these stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. How Engelhart's like, what, 60 now, maybe? 60s, 70s, I would think. 60s, yeah. 70, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just trying so, to imagine him in my mind now. To answer the big question, is Dark Detective a ripoff? I mean, did the Dark Knight rip off Dark Detective? I would say, I think all of us are voting no on that yeah negatory boy negatory because which one's gonna be more remembered i mean come on (laughs) really which one is is already made an impact on history highest grossing film in the world ever when it was released (laughs) that would be end game now but okay yeah right yeah right (laughs) avengers end game right i don't think Uh, i i don't even it probably cracked top 20 or something but i don't think it made box office records i don't think it was even top five but Dark it, it Knight, was huge, though, of course, yes. Dark Knight and Endgame are hanging from a cliff. You got one hand each. Which one do you let go, Andrew? Oh, I'm, I'm keeping Dark Knight for yeah, sure. Yeah. I think all exactly. Of that. That's yeah. exactly my fucking point. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, Inglehart mostly a had a big hand in this here. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just bring it back around for just returns. a moment. Yeah. All right. Well, That's I just be- what I meant. I believe then that that is superhero stuff you should know. Well, thank you for that bat tutelage once again, Ben Juan. Always lovely to have all of you here as well. Uh, anyway, um, thank you to Kooky Noms, Matt Herring, Elijah B., Shamrock Bowles, Aaron Willett, Ian H., Dan D., Leom O., and, of course, Super Infra Man. We have all kinds of tiers at patreon.com slash superhero stuff pod uh namely the first tier is a shasta army that's one dollar we have a three dollar tier as well check that out five dollar tier is a bonus feed the most important one probably i mean we have more expensive ones but let's just say our five dollar tier is really where it gets juicy with our deeper dive feeds and uh please leave us a review in itunes always lovely to have those and uh, please record us something on your phone recorder app, your voice recorder app on your phone. Zach has sent us many, many fine ones. 
and we've had uh, others as well from other people sent in. And um, from the Voice Recorder app, you can email it straight away to superhousepodcast at gmail.com. I'm Thunderwolf Drew on Twitter and Instagram. Check us out on YouTube if you're not already. As of this recording, we just recorded Ben Cave Episode 2. Going to be getting to that soon, but check out Ben Cave Episode 1. Uh, that's already out. And uh, trying to conquer... Uh, well, conquer is a bad word, but we're trying to get out there on YouTube, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, take it away, uh, Wolfie, with the uh, whatever you got. Hey, Otis, this Wolfie. How's it going? I'm leaving now. The episode's over. Cool. <laughs> and uh, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you guys keep asking me back to be on here, but you can follow me <laughs> at Zachary Jackson Brown Art. And my website is ZacharyJacksonBrownArt.com. We need, we need the Joker voice, man. And you, <laughs> also, if you guys are fans of his art, you can see in the background here in the video, we got Jack Nicholson Joker. We got Vampire Joker that uh, Zach dressed up as when we did the uh, Is Batman 89 a Ripoff of Strange Apparitions. We got the Cameron Monaghan Jeremiah Valeska Gotham Joker. That's a mouthful. And uh, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker over here in my column of Jokers that I will get framed once I figure out how to do how that. How to frame things. Yes, how to frame <laughs> I things. I need to look up the videos. I have to look up how to do it because right now <laughs> the frame is not uh, is so sturdy that I cannot put a screw through it. So, sturdy I will need a oh, com. Go there. Hmm? Uh, I'm just making that up. All right. Anyway. All right. You can catch <laughs> you can Cakes. find us com. on Instagram at superhero stuff pod. You can also follow me at Ben Juan Ryder. And I believe that is all the superhero stuff you should know for today. Thank you very much for listening. Ben signing off. Signing off, y'all. This is Wolfie signing off. And this is your old Uncle Joker signing off. <laughs> 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 <laughs>